I find myself cruising Maine in Manti, Utah. Manti is a sleepy little Mormon village right in the very center of the state of Utah. What brings a dazzling urbanite like myself, such an urbane individual, to a town like Manti? Well, if you actually know anything about Manti, you'll know exactly what brings me here. And that's, this was the residence of Big Daddy Ed Roth back in the day. He's gone now, but they have an annual Big Daddy Ed Roth reunion. The Roth reunion is held here in Manti, Utah, every single year. And uh, it's a gathering of the tribes of hot rodders and bikers and cartoon lunatics and just crazy, crazy, wonderful people all come here to Manti, Utah, a very unlikely place for such a strange collection of individuals. One of the most interesting groups showing up here are the Pinstripers. Ed got his start as a Pinstriper back in the 50s. And while he moved on to building his own cars and cartooning and chopping motorcycles, the 50s were the hot rod era in America, and Ed was alive and well right in the middle of the whole darn thing. It was a product of post-war America. I think what made that era of people the very best is when they end up being able to use their talent and they dared explore it. And they dared try doing different things. And so when Ed had his normal job, he said in the evenings he would stripe four to five different cars every night. You know, and that gave him a little extra money to build his next project. Sign painting and cartooning were sort of natural extensions of pinstriping. And Ed started doing these things at the car shows. In fact, one of his favorite things to do was painting caricatures and hot rods on the back of leather jackets. His compatriot in a lot of this stuff was a character by the name of Von Dutch. He and Von Dutch worked real close together for years. They were good friends up to when Von Dutch passed away. Um, once Ed was your friend, he was always your friend. And didn't matter what things happened in life, you know. Ed really had a lot of good close friends and Von Dutch was one of them. Another odd duck pinstriper is this character who goes by the name Magoo. Frank is his real name. I had him make me a t-shirt in the time-honored tradition of the Rat Fink reunion. I met Ed Roth in 1955, and Roth had just come out of the Air Force and had started a new shop and was doing his thing. And they got permission, my dad and Rudy Ramos and uh, Ed, Eddie Golden took me to Roth's shop uh, when he was with the Baron and Kelly. And uh, he gave me my first two striping brushes. One's in the gallery and the other one's in my box. And uh, from then on, I was striping. I was about eight years old when that happened, eight, nine years old. Striping leads to hot rodding, or is it the other way around? I forget sometimes. Another tradition of the Rat Fink reunion is the Pinewood Derby Race. Eileen has built a full-on convention center here at their home in Manti. The reunion's been going on for quite some years, but only about ten here in their house. The first party was given by Bruckner and... Uh, Robert Williams and all that, you know. But um, what I consider the true Rat Fink Party reunions, we didn't call them that for a long time. They didn't become reunion until it went over the moon. And we're all sitting around BSing and talking and all this and that, you know. And Rock is, is anybody hungry? <laughs> you know? He says, why haven't he up, gone? And he comes back with a number 10 can of pork and beans bag of hot dogs, no buns, bottle of mustard. Kim had already fired up the barbecue, and that's, okay. that was what we considered the first rat fink party. <laughs> that's pretty good. It was a fun time. And then we just made it, why don't we do this again next year and invite some more people? And the word kind of got around. No, Ed never cussed. Never. He never drank. You know? And he had some moral standards that 
even I had a hard time. In fact, he used to tell me, your language does not behoove you. Because <laughs> he never cut. But he hung with some of the rottenest and rowdiest, you know. You'd think he would. He was a great guy. <laughs> I respected the hell out of him. One of Ed's interesting sidelines was making t-shirts. Now this is a rather complicated piece of business. You see, he was making leather jackets. He was painting on leather jackets. But a lot of people couldn't afford leather jackets. So he started painting on t-shirts, which was at the time considered just an article of underwear. But people started wearing them and everybody was proud to have a Roth painting on their t-shirt. And pretty soon he had to start mass producing the darn things because everybody wanted them. And then everybody was wearing t-shirts with artwork on them made by all kinds of people. But what everybody really wanted was an Ed Roth with a picture of Rat Fink on it. Rat Fink lived in a junkyard. And Rat Fink had access to all of the used parts that anyone could want. And so Rat Fink with his other friends could make anything they wanted when the uh, junkyard was closed and you know they had free reign. He could be in any fast car he wanted to be. He could do anything anyone ever wanted to do because he was a free spirit. Pretty soon Ed was licensing Rat Fink to appear on everything from keychains to plastic model kits from the big manufacturers. And this was great but what Ed really wanted to do was build crazy hot rods. Well, I know Ed's love first was to build cars. And after Ed had finished a car, um, and he would show it at a car show, he didn't like to be idle, and he knew how to stripe and airbrush. And so at the shows, he, that's what he would do. He'd airbrush images, and he'd airbrush the Rat Fink on t-shirts. And then he could have actually marketed faster than he could airbrush. So then he started to screen t-shirts and take them there so they would be available for people to pick up. It was interesting to me to see how many cars he would actually manage to build in a year plus do all of the Rat Fink t-shirts and make all of the trinkets. Ed often just gave his cars away to charity and all the awards he won he sold well, whatever, he was raising money to build more hot rods, what else, so he could go to more car shows and win more awards. Eileen's been going around buying up whatever awards she can so that she can hang them up here, but the cars are just way too expensive to buy. These are interesting, the same manufacturers that made the Rat Fink models also started doing models of all of his various hot rods. No kid from the 1960s ever got by without building at least one Ed Roth car. It was singularly the coolest thing you could do if you were too young to have a driver's license. And if you did have a driver's license, well then you had to build your own dang hot rod. The Rat Fink reunion includes a really nice car show for those people whose toys are just a little larger than the plastic models. A lot of these cars are just fabulous. It blows my mind. And a couple of hundred of them show up in the park in Manti. Needless to say, a lot of them have really outrageous pinstriping and airbrushing, although some just have rust. This is because one of the newest trends is the rat rod some rust bucket looking thing which is actually mechanically good but looks like it's about to fall apart but the show was really about the customs and the hot rods now check out this deuce roadster this turned out to be my favorite car and therefore winner of the prestigious righteous ride award and Ed was a biker. In fact, he published the very first magazine on chopping motorcycles. And he practically invented the V8 trike. Check out this 572 V8 trike. And this V8 trike, sweet ride. But the show attracts everything from bone stalker to outrageous lead sleds. 
come to Manti and check the darn thing out. Well, I must say this is incredibly enjoyable driving around out here in the middle of Utah. Beautiful green farmland, irrigation sprinklers running, farmers plowing their field, deer darting out into the highway when you're doing 80 miles an hour. So this has been incredibly enjoyable. Uh, do go looking for the Rat Fink Reunion online. That's ratfink.com or ratfinkreunion.com here in Manti, Utah. Come on up. I think you'll find it to be quite the gas. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Find the Vimeo channel. Like me on Facebook, etc., etc., etc. I'm not sure how you found this particular movie on the internet, but I hope you didn't find it boring. And I'll see you here again next week.